Accident history over the past nine years shows controlled flight in the terrain as the leading cause of fatalities and as the second leading cause of hull losses. American Airlines pilots operate in and out of numerous airports deeply embedded in mountainous terrain. We face the threat in the Andes, Rockies, Alps, Central America, and numerous other locations. This video segment from the Advanced Aircraft Maneuvering Program will focus on the proper response to a terrain encounter. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Now we're going to step into another arena here. <coughs> Controlled flight in the terrain. Now this subject, control flight in the terrain, is a very sensitive one for us here at American Airlines. And something we have to get straight right up front here is that this segment of this program was in this program being given to Czech Airmen before our accident at Hartford or our tragedy at Cali. I'm trying to say to you is there's nothing I'm saying here that is a consequence of the Cali accident. There may be some things I'm going to talk about that apply to what happened at Cali, but they're not consequential to it, okay? Okay, as we look at the top bullet, read that to yourselves. <coughs> Tell me, is that a strong statement? That's pretty strong, isn't it? You see, as you study this issue, as I've pointed out, and over the, if you look at over the last six years or seven years now, what you see is that the leading cause of hull loss is loss of control, followed closely by control flight in the terrain. If you expand the window back nine years, then CFIT ekes into the lead, followed closely by loss of control as the leading cause of hull loss. And then you go to bullet number two. As we analyze this issue, who more than American Airlines flies into deeply embedded mountainous airports all over this planet in the Rockies and Central America and Andes and the Alps with regular and high frequency? And as we look at that, the answer clearly becomes no one. Lufthansa and BA go into a couple airports like Kathmandu that we don't go into yet. <laughs> and and, and uh, But no one goes into deeply embedded airports with a frequency that we do day in and day out. We got the threat. Then you come to this bullet, situation awareness. Now, you know, I know that every pilot in this room clearly understands that our job is to maintain RSA all the time, isn't it? That's our job. We have to maintain our situation awareness when we're taxiing. We get paid for that. But when we're in the Andes, you know, in South and Central America below 250 and below 150 in the Rockies and the Alps, we have got to maintain our situation awareness 100%. Another way of saying that is if we're flying our airplanes below the level of the surrounding rocks and we cannot see out the front window, then we have got to know precisely where we are at every instant. There are no options. None. And we come to this, delayed response syndrome. This is fascinating stuff. When you study these 37 accidents, what you find is that in 58% of those accidents, this GPWS Mode 2 system was installed in those airplanes and going off without any response or with a totally inadequate response. And you say, I did. I said, how can that possibly happen? How can someone ignore that? So I, I read the transcripts of the CVRs. When you read the transcripts of the CVRs, you clearly get it. See, when that thing goes off and says, terrain, terrain, pull up to you, 
What's it really saying to you? What's it really saying? Yes, exactly. You don't know where you are. And that's exactly what happens in those cockpits, is the where are we stuff starts up. What you hear in there is, what VOR did you tune in? Did you identify that VOR? What DME were we supposed to turn left at, 16 or 24? What's the active waypoint now? All that where are we stuff is going on in the cockpit. My message to you, guys and gals, is if that thing goes off and you cannot see out the front window, you have got to revert immediately and aggressively without even the slightest delay into the vertical right now. The reason is, is when you study these things, if we make this a mountainside and we make this the airplane approaching the mountainside, as you know, GPWS mode twos that we have in our airplanes today trigger on geometry, slope angle versus approach angle. Based on that geometry, they will trigger. And when they trigger, they leave you precious little room to escape. And when you further study this, you find out that the most significant performance factor of all is the seconds of delay. Every second that you delay in your response will dramatically affect the altitude that is achievable at any given distance down range. Dramatically. You cannot delay not even for one second. As we look down to the next block, we're talking about enhanced GPWS. Each of these blocks moves us farther away from the mountain or the ground if it's kind of an approach sort of accident. Each one moves us farther away from the ground. What is enhanced GPWS? As you know, this is coming to all American Airlines airplanes and aggressively being installed in our 757s right now. We flew this system extensively in one of our 75s down in the Andes, and it worked quite well. We are now putting into all 75s, and eventually it will come to all fleet aircraft. What is enhanced GPWS? Well, basically, as most of you may realize, it is an onboard terrain database. It's down in the E&E &E compartment. It's being tracked by your ring laser gyro platform, or if you have GPS, by GPS. Understand that that system is totally virtual. There's nothing real about it. It's virtual. It's all on board. But it does some wonderful things for you, i.e., it'll show you some terrain awareness through graphics. And most importantly, it will double your warning time on terrain. But because it is virtual, and it's possible also that it might slip with your platform, the company has decided to leave our GPWS Mode 2 systems in the airplanes. They're in there, the MEL required, they will be maintained. We're going to layer the enhanced GPWS system on top of those to give you two layers of protection, double protection. But well, my message to you remains the same. If you cannot see out the front window and that thing goes off and says, terrain, terrain, pull up, you must react immediately and aggressively without even the slightest delay into the vertical. First, because it's the right thing to do. And second, because you can't tell the difference. Both systems say the same thing. They use the same air ink bus. They say, terrain, terrain, pull up. You don't know for sure which one's going off. Get out of there. The best part of the enhanced GPWS is that it literally doubles the warning time on this thing. Everything working right, if this GPWS here would have triggered in nine seconds, this one here will trigger the alert mode 18 seconds from contact. That's good stuff. Now let's back even further away from the mountainside or the ground on a final approach kind of accident, back to this one. Loss of situation awareness. As you see, as you study these 37 accidents, what you find out tragically is that in 64% of these accidents, 
one or the other crew member, or both, has realized that they have lost their situation awareness. But they don't react. What I'm suggesting to you here is, is that you do not have to wait for this thing to say, terrain, terrain, pull up. If you're flying below the level of the surrounding rocks, and you cannot see out the front window, and that stuff starts in your cockpit, and you know how that stuff starts, you know. Where are we? Are we supposed to be over? What's the active waypoint now? We should be going bang, boom, bop. You should be going to the vertical and getting out of there right now. You don't have to wait for that thing to say, terrain, terrain, pull up. But you know what? That's very hard to do. Very hard. Because pilots, it's our nature. In fact, we were hired for this attribute. <laughs> it, it, it's our nature. We get it done. In the face of adversity, we get it done. That's what we get paid for. And so we have this tendency to want to say, you know, I think I'm supposed to be over here. I'll, I'll get over there and make it right, or over here and make it right. Not now. Not now. Now, the only way you can make yourself go into the vertical in this situation, because of your nature, is to have a serious talk with yourself. Now, don't let anybody see you doing that, okay? <laughs> but, but when you have that, you know, I have had that talk with myself. I've had it. And I fly down south a lot. But I know now, because I've done that, that if that ever happens to me, I'm going straight to the vertical. The only reason is, is because I'm predisposed to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't. You might be interested in knowing that we have one of those last year. Uh, based on situation awareness alone. In the Keto Bowl, we had one of our captains react in that way. I'm not going to tell you the story because it is a special subject of a course that we call Human Factors and Safety Training. But the point is, based on loss of SA alone, that captain reacted. And on evaluation, we find it's a darn good thing that he did. This is coming to your manuals, and I know how you all love to see these memory items coming back. But you know, as you look at these, in the way that they're, you know, they're, you, you read it and it's printed out there for you and it's printed out in a generic way that works for all airplanes. And honestly, again, as I stand with my back to that, I cannot recite it. I can't. But I know what it says to do. And I think it's really important to remember what we do. I find it easier to remember what we do and certainly much more practical to apply. What does that thing say to do? Well, it says when we get a terrain, terrain pull-up warning, the pilot flying will take the throttles and physically advance them fully and disconnect them. Boy, is there a lot of reasons they'll retard on this maneuver if you don't turn them off. So up and off. And once again, anytime you do that with your hand, you want to always be sure the speed brakes are stowed. With the other hand, we disconnect the autopilot and we pitch to 20, 20 degrees deck angle. Sounds a lot like something we did earlier, doesn't it? Except for the 20 degrees part. That's really the only change. That becomes our starting point for this event. Now, as it says on the slide, if you can't see out the front window, then you're going to pull uh, wings level. The reason you do that is because you want to keep your lift vector straight up. That will get you the most altitude in the shortest distance. So let's get, make that our starting point then, 20 degrees of deck angle with a full thrust vector in. Now let me give you another interesting statistic. Of the last 17 CFIT accidents, the terrain engaged, the angle of the slope on average was 24 degrees. That is a steep mountainside. That means half of those were more than 24 and half of them were less. Let's just use 24 degrees. Next question. Here's an airplane with a 20 degree deck angle going against a 24 degree mountain slope. How are we doing here? 
Yeah. Because? Because? Right? I'd say the angle of attack on average here is probably about 10 degrees in this kind of a maneuver. Easily 10 degree angle of attack. So if you've got a 20 degree deck angle and a 10 degree angle of attack, what's your flight path angle? Right, 10 degrees. How's 10 doing against 24? Yeah, not so good. Next question, how would you know if you can't see out the window? It's not doing so good. And once again, the pilot not flying becomes a key and critical player. Just like he was in microburst, he's got to advise you how you're doing relative to the threat, which is the ground. So, if the pilot not flying is a singing a tune that goes something like this, 900, 800, 700, 600, 500, you better either put your wheels down, <laughs> or get your nose up, right? I think get the nose up is what we're looking for here, right? So he starts that countdown, you get your nose up. You know, you pull your nose up now to 25. He says, hey, man, you are still closing. You're coming up on 500 feet closing. Hey, you're still closing. Well, 30 degrees. You're still closing on this mountain. You come up on 300 feet, you're closing. 35 degrees, deck angle. You don't want to hit the mountain. Rule one, don't hit the ground. Think about it, guys and gals. Think about it. Against the average mountainside that's been engaged on the last 17 CFIT accidents, it will take a minimum of a 35 degree deck angle to match flight path to slope angle. This is not a wimp maneuver. <laughs> you have got to get serious and you've got to get serious in a hurry. Okay. So we've made the corner, we've matched the slope, and now we look like this. Now I think everyone in the room realizes this particular scenario cannot continue indefinitely. <laughs> we now have an energy maneuverability problem, don't we? How much energy do we have? How high can we go with it? So as we climb this mountain, our energy is bleeding, isn't it? As we think through this using some of the aviator stuff we've already talked about today, as we're climbing this mountainside and our energy is bleeding coming off our airspeed indicator, what might be a good idea if we see the airspeed starting to go below our clean min maneuver speed and we still haven't topped the mountain? What could we do to keep us going for a little while? Sure, slats. Flaps won't help too much. Now this is subsequent to the initial move now. This is not part of the initial move. But much later on, when we see ourselves running out of energy, throwing our slats out will help all of our airplanes fly 40, they'll fly 40 knots slower than they would otherwise at 1G. Well, sorry you Fokker guys. <laughs> okay, as we go up the hillside, we're bleeding energy. As we're bleeding energy, how would we know that we have peaked the mountain? How would we know we've peaked the ridge? Sure, the radio altimeter would shoot out, and the pilot not flying with some excitement, I imagine, <laughs> will announce that that puppy just shot out. Well, now you see that the thing shot out, and you've cleared the top, you're over the top, but look at you. You're out of energy, and you look like this. So now it's time for one of those nose high, unusual attitude recoveries, huh? So we go through that process, and we get the airplane recovered and back into a normal flying condition, and then what? After you recover from this nose high attitude, you'll go to maximum angle climb speed. And then at maximum angle climb speed, climb, if you're in the Alps or the Rockies, climb to 15,000 feet and level off and figure out where you really are. And if you're down in the Andes, go to maximum climb speed and then climb all the way to 25,000 feet. Then level off and figure out where you really are. The neat thing about down in the Andes, once you figure out where you are, you'll be the only one that knows. <laughs> but the neat thing is because you reacted immediately and aggressively, you're alive. 